And uh, I'd like to uh, have the breakout uh, group leaders up here. Um, they will give you an introduction into the different breakout groups. So Anu, Sergeant, Madeline, can you come up? Kazumi? So I'd, I'd like to introduce them, and they will then introduce uh, their topic uh, on uh, one slide each. So uh, Dr. Madeleine Glick uh, on the left, then Dr. Nu Agawal, Professor Kazumi Vada, you've already had him as a chair, and then Dr. Sajan Saini. So uh, do we have the, the breakout slides? There is a slide set of four. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the uh, application interest group for the multi-terabit transceiver for Datacom. So, you know, it's, this is what I would call phase zero compared to what we just heard. Uh, we're going to set out the problem. We heard this morning there's a lot of opportunity for transceivers, especially for the data center, but there are a lot of problems that are still to be resolved, particularly as we go to higher data rates. So the task here, um, phase zero was started at the uh, Summer Academy last year, so some of these results were just discussions from that. Um, so the task is to come up with a multi-terabit transceiver that has scalability options, and we listed out in our phase zero a lot of the problems, or I don't know if showstoppers is the right word, I would maybe call it trade-offs. Uh, we'd have to analyze the differences for the power, the cost, the dimension, scalability, what particular devices we would use, what light sources we would use, uh, modulation formats, fiber coupling, how we would integrate it with uh, CMOS integration, you know, interposers, cost. So, I mean, there's a wealth of problems or challenges to attack. And I think as he was saying before that depend, you know, the idea is to have a group of people who are interested in looking at this problem, uh, pick a particular issue, perhaps like a low-hanging fruit of something we could attack together that is uh, interesting to everybody, but pre-competitive, something that would help everybody go forward uh, you know, for the ecosystem, as they say. So we would start off by looking at state-of-the-art, pick a problem that's interesting to everybody. It doesn't even have to be on that list. Uh, oh, the uh, solution there is just something we discussed at the uh, Summer Academy. We sat together for a few hours and looked at what could be an option for a terabit transceiver, but I mean, that doesn't define the problem we have to, we could discuss. Um, so that's, our, join our group. <laughs> Okay, so this is about the mid-range IR photonic sensors. Um, I see that several of you are already joined in. And last summer, just as Madeline pointed out at the Academy and also the Winter Academy, we had some discussions about the sensors. And what the idea is, is let's look at, um, uh, in the picture there shows three circles. One is the source circle in blue, the green is the sensing element circuit, and the orange is the detection circuit. If you want everything planar on chip for mid-infrared sensing, then we need to find those three components, and we have to find a path to make these picks, uh, hopefully, in the AIM SUNY fab as soon as possible. So right now, we're still a ways away from that. The bottom line is we need to get together today and uh, in the future to talk about showstoppers. For example, do we have low loss waveguides? Are they low loss enough in order to give us PPM or PPB sensitivity? What about light sources? What about the spectrometer? What about a detector on chip and packaging? Uh, sensing is the only element of photonic sensors, the only one that really has, it's open to the environment. You don't have any package around it. So that's another thing that we have to think about. How do we couple this such that it is uh, reliable and rugged, yet it's open to sense the environment? And the idea, as Madeline pointed out, is pre-competitively, if industry folks get together and say, this is a problem, this is a bottleneck, I would like to be involved personally to solve this challenge, and here's how I can contribute. I think that's the best way to move forward. And um, you know, I just put down a few of these approaches. Select one showstopper. Obviously, we can't jump with everything. And as the onboard optical interconnect team pointed out, you pick one and 
let's move forward with that and solve each one, one at a time. So this is the idea for the IR photonic sensor team. Okay, so LiDAR. <coughs> so uh, maybe already you're familiar with um, self-driving car or gaming and uh, recently uh, iPhone 10. They are all using 3D imager. And um, actually, um, this is a very good timing because um, such a consumer photonics going to be very important for uh, this PIC you know, challenge. A lot of like uh, mass production is required and going to be uh, very cheap. And I uh, always uh, checked who is working on which wavelengths. And I just asked uh, Dr. Masui-san, and what wavelengths you use? He said less than 900 nanometer. So why don't we just move into uh, like optical communication wavelengths? That is the reason. Uh, the reason is actually those wavelengths are eye safe. So good for us, okay? This is the important point. And so if we can make it such a wavelength range, then we need to have something to detect the light. The germanium is that one. So we can uh, finish up such a CMOS compatible or maybe CMOS integrated, integrable, you know, uh, lighters. So in this uh, particular AIG, we like to, f you know, focus on how to move into such a 1.55 micron range and uh, what is uh, our, you know, technical uh, challenge and uh, maybe we could make some uh, demo chips. That's it. Thank you, Kazumi. Okay, we're on to the last quad chart before we go to our breakout. I'm always a little um, sadly observant at these talks where we're doing state-of-the-art photonics and we never have enough laser pointers around. The most basic photonic tool for us as educators and communicators. So the last topic we have is for um, RF photonics, RF signal processing, but of course um, the term that we're going to focus on here is looking at millimeter wave signal processing going even up to sub-terahertz frequencies. Uh, the idea here, as represented by this schematic, as some of you are very familiar with, is to address the problem of what people call radio over fiber or wireless over fiber. And I think the talk we had earlier today with Eggleton and Marpong was a very nice setup for beginning this conversation today. Uh, Arthur Paolella is our uh, chief technical contact in helping to steer this group. Uh, he's unfortunately not, uh, not able to attend this week, so he sends his regrets. It's my pleasure to stand in and uh, assist uh, in his absence. So I'll be leading the group with you today during our breakout. Um, in consultation with Arthur, we've, uh, oh, look at that. There's a formatting problem. There's ones everywhere. Okay. You understand bullet lists, of course. So uh, Arthur has proposed uh, in the upper left quadrant uh, a series of potential showstoppers. And showstoppers, I think, the better euphemism we've heard earlier today is low-hanging fruit. Um, so we need to come to some consensus ultimately on what's a tractable problem for us to uh, work on as a group, something that presents an open solution and not something subject to IP constraints. That's a conversation we're not going to solve by 5.30, but uh, I'm hoping that this is a good springboard and we might continue to talk this evening even during the networking. Arthur has proposed a series of potential showstoppers so so for us to uh, select from and discuss uh, during the breakout. And I guess I will leave you with uh, the only other comment that I think was iterated by my colleagues. We're only going to select one of these showstoppers ultimately or something else that's not even on the list. As I said, the conversation is only beginning today. Okay, thank you very much, Jurgen. Thank you very much, Sergeant and everybody. So, um, uh, organizational data comp stays in this room, and all the other three groups are outside. So, follow the leader. <laughs>